Today we're going to be taking a look at the Ford F-150 Lightning's Pro Power Onboard System. To my left is my 2022 Ford F-150 Lightning with Pro Power on board. The Pro Power on board system is fantastic. There are outlets all over the Lightning. They're in the frunk, they're in the cab, they're in the bed. Now most of them are 110 volt outlets, but there is one 240 volt outlet that's in the bed and that can deliver 30 amps. The system can deliver a combined 9.6 kilowatt of power. Now that's good enough to like power an entire job site if you're a contractor. Well, a reasonably sized job site. Most contractors that need a power saw, power tools, air compressor can handle all that without a problem. But one of the things it can do and that Ford hasn't been shy in telling us about is that it can also charge electric cars. If one of your EV brethren happens to run out of charge somewhere and is stranded on the side of the road, like that really happens all the time. But it, I guess it does happen once in a while. Happened to me when I did my Chevy Bolt EV <laughs> range test recently, but that's of my own doing. I was really pushing it and trying to go further than I should have. Uh, but in any event, it can charge electric vehicles. So for that, we're gonna use my 2021 Tesla Model 3 here today. I'm gonna go over the system, the adapters that Ford gives you to be able to use ProPower on board to charge an EV, basically show somebody how they would do it. But first, don't forget, please click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on State of Charge. Before we jump into the video, I want to mention that one of the reasons why I'm doing this now is because for the first time in 13 years, I can't charge on a level two charging source at home. That's because I've ripped apart my garage and are doing a complete remodel to create a new state of charge garage. That's gonna enable me to have much better charging video content and my charging station reviews. So I had to rip everything out, including all of my outlets and my charging stations that were on the wall. And we're almost ready now to start reinstalling everything. And when I do that, I'm gonna have my channel sponsor, Q Merit, do all of the electrical work. They're gonna hardwire my Tesla wall connector, my new Ford Charge Station Pro 100 amp dedicated circuit for the Charge Station Pro with Ford's intelligent backup power system. I bought all that. We're gonna be installing all of that and Q Merit's gonna be doing all of the work. And I'd like to mention that because I know a lot of people are tempted to install their own electric vehicle charging equipment at home, but I urge you to call a professional. Get a licensed electrician to do that. Now, I partnered with QMerit because I believe QMerit does a really good job at installing electric vehicle charging equipment. They're the largest nationwide network of electric vehicle charging equipment installers. And I've gotten a lot of feedback over the years from my followers that they were happy with QMerit services. So I urge you, if you have electric vehicle charging equipment, to give QMerit a call. As a matter of fact, follow the link in the description of this video and you'll get a free, no hassle, no obligation quote on installing your electric vehicle charging equipment. Okay, so first let's take a look at the equipment needed to use Pro Power on board to charge an electric vehicle. So underneath this lid on this lower compartment is where the equipment comes with your F-150 Lightning. And it's quite honestly a good place to keep it, so that's where I'm keeping it. So let's take a look at this. First over here we have the Ford Mobile Charger. It's a 32 amp dual voltage charger that can charge any electric vehicle in North America. It's a really good unit because I said it's dual voltage. You use this adapter, you plug it into this, the top of the unit here in order to charge from a regular 120 volt outlet. You can do that, but it'll charge really slowly from 120 volts. But if you have a 240 volt source, like we have in the back of the Lightning, you would use this adapter. It's a NEMA 1450 plug. And this is kind of like the standard for electric vehicle charging equipment. If they're plug-in units, most of the time they have a NEMA 1450 plug on them. Now, the only problem is the outlet behind the Lightning doesn't have a NEMA 1450 outlet because that's really dedicated for 50 amp circuits. We can only deliver 30 amps with the Lightning's Pro Power on board. So Ford includes includes this adapter here. This is the male side that you plug into 
the Lightning's Pro Power onboard, and it's basically it's a 30 amp circuit, and it allows you to plug in a NEMA 1450 male plug into this and be able to utilize the Pro Power onboard with a NEMA 1450. And then there's one more thing that Ford includes, which is hilarious in my opinion. This is a J1772 to Tesla adapter. This is what you would use to charge a Tesla vehicle like we're gonna do here today. Tesla uses a different connector than all other electric vehicles. They use their own proprietary connector. So to charge a Tesla from a J1772 charger, which this is here, this is the, the industry standard for North America. It's called the J1772. All electric vehicles use it for level one and level two charging, except for Tesla vehicles. They use uh, the Tesla connector. But this adapter here, when you plug it onto the J1772, it allows you to charge Tesla vehicles. Now. The funny thing about this is, and the reason why I think it's a total trolling move on Ford's part is, every Tesla vehicle comes with one of these. And people leave it in their car in case they ever need to charge from a J1772 for emergencies. So pretty much every Tesla on the road already has this in their car. So if it ran out of charge and a lightning happened to pull up and could help them out and charge them, they'd already have this in their car. So. You know, I think it's hilarious that Ford included this. It's a total troll move. I'm convinced that Ford is just trolling Tesla saying, you know what, uh, we'll help you guys out when you're stranded with our wonderful uh, electric pickup truck. We'll, we'll give you some energy. We'll come completely prepared to charge you up in case we need that to happen. So I think it's hilarious. So here's the equipment. Now let's plug it all in and see how this all works. All right, so we have the Ford mobile charger. We have our adapter here. And what we need to do first is take the mobile charger, grab the NEMA 1450 adapter, and plug this guy in if it's nice and snugly. Then we need to take this guy, open up the 240 volt outlet, plug this in. Now there's one thing you also have to do, there's a little button back here. You have to press this button to turn on Pro Power on board first. Uh, otherwise the system won't work in the bed. I didn't realize that at first. And uh, when I tried to use this last week, it took me like a half an hour to figure it out. But there's a little button that you have to press, otherwise no power will come to the tailgate here. Okay, so I have the adapter in there. Now I will plug in my Ford mobile charger and we should be good to go. All we need to do now is grab our Tesla adapter that Ford graciously provides us with, plug in and let's see if it works. Okay, there's a blinking blue light in the Tesla charge port that blinks green once the vehicle is charging and it has already begun blinking green. So, we're charging. Okay, so we just plugged in. It's 6.19 p.m. We're at 68% state of charge. And we're actually delivering the full 30 amps that Pro Power Onboard can deliver, which is seven kilowatt. The Tesla screen is telling me that it will take three hours and 50 minutes to completely charge. Um, and wow, we already just jumped up to 69%. So we probably were almost at 69% as it was. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say we're starting now. It's 620 and it just turned to 69%. I wanna see how long it takes to add 10% state of charge to the car. Because honestly, if I were stranded and I added 10% state of charge, that would be good for about 30 miles for me of driving because my car can go about 300 miles per charge now. I know it's EPA range rated at 353 miles. That was when it was brand new. It's almost two years old now, so the range is degraded a little bit. And I'm comfortable enough saying it can go 300 miles. I've driven it quite a bit now, and I think that's pretty much the driving range, even if I was taking it easy because I needed to get to a charging station. And, you know, I should be able to get to a charging station within 30 miles if I did run out somewhere, unless I really <laughs> completely misjudged how far I could go or what the terrain was gonna be like. All right, so we started at 620 at 69% state of charge. I wanna see how long it takes us 
to get to 70% state of charge. Now we're delivering seven kilowatts, so that's pretty good. We're going to be getting seven kilowatt hour in one hour of charging in just about an hour. I should add about 30 miles of range. We're gonna see exactly where we are in an hour. Okay, so we finished up at 723. So it took an hour and three minutes to raise my Tesla Model 3's battery state of charge from 69% up to 79%. Add 10% of the battery, which is about 30 miles of driving range. That's not bad. If you're stranded somewhere and a lightning can give you a boost, you know, an hour to get 30 miles, it's not DC fast charge speed, but hey, if you really need a charge, I mean, that's as good as most level two charging stations can deliver, public ones at least, because most of them are usually limited to somewhere around six or six and a half kilowatts. So you might have faster level two charging at home, but the public charging stations are typically gonna deliver somewhere around six or six and a half kilowatts. So the Lightning can charge your vehicle just as good as that. Now the uh, Model 3 showed that it had taken in eight kilowatt hour of energy, which kind of falls in line. And it was gonna be somewhere right around seven kilowatt hour. And my lightning showed that the state of charge went from 100% down to 95%. I would have expected it to go down to 94% because if it delivered eight kilowatt hour to the Tesla, eight kilowatt hour, if you do the math, I have 131 kilowatt hour battery pack. That should be somewhere around 6% of the battery, not 5% of the battery. But you know, the state of charge in electric vehicles is not a perfectly correct number. So you have to understand that when you have a state of charge indicator in your car, it's pretty close to where the battery's at, but it's not a perfect indicator. In this case, I think the lightning state of charge was off a little bit. In any event, that's all we have here today for how to charge your electric vehicle with a Ford F-150 Lightning. Now remember, I charged a Tesla vehicle with this and I needed the Tesla adapter, but it can charge any electric vehicle. You just don't need to use the Tesla adapter in that case. You just plug the Ford mobile charger right into the charge port of any other electric vehicle other than Tesla vehicles and you're good to go. Listen, if this is your first time here at State of Charge, please don't forget, ring that notification bell, subscribe to the channel, give me a like, all that good stuff so you don't miss any upcoming Ford F-150 Lightning and electric vehicle news and reviews here on State of Charge.